What's up guys, it's Humphrey. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to buy stocks and I'm gonna be using some popular investing apps to show you exactly how. The apps we're using today are Robinhood and Webull, but even if you don't have these trading apps, many of the other platforms are very similar. So in this video, we're gonna go over the different order types that you need to know when placing an order. We're actually going to buy a stock on camera since right now it's trading hours. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you the differences between the Robinhood interface and the Webull interface. By the end of this video, you're gonna be able to buy a stock completely on your own. Now, if you're already someone who knows how to buy stocks, this video will still be a good refresher for you. I'm gonna go over the different order types and it's always good to get a refresher on those as well as an explanation. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. So if you end up enjoying my content, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. So the first thing you actually need to have when it comes to buying stocks is actually you need what's called a brokerage account. The reason why you need a brokerage is that you can't directly just call up a company and say, hey, can I buy your shares? What you actually have to do is go through an intermediary and it's called a brokerage and they have access to different exchanges such as the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. When it comes to brokerages, there's a lot of different options, but the most popular ones these days are all online. They're typically always apps and they have zero to low commissions on trades. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So let me pull up my Robinhood account right now and I will share the screen with you guys. But basically I'm gonna show you guys how to trade and basically walk you through the app. Now, if you're not already set up on Robinhood, when you do download the app, you're actually gonna have to go through the account setup, which will ask you a lot of different types of questions, including your risk tolerance, some personal details about yourself, and how often you like to trade. You'll also be asked to provide your bank account and your social security number. So please do not be alarmed if you guys see this. It's pretty normal and routine when it comes to opening a trading account. They need to actually verify your identity. Once you're all set up though, this is the screen that you should have. It's your home screen. And as you can see, I'm recording this during market hours right now. So stocks are trading live. Now to buy a stock, we're gonna click this middle button on the bottom here, and we're actually gonna type in a stock. I'm gonna actually look up Snapchat because that's the stock I'm interested in. Now here's Snapchat, it's trading at $51.33 a share. And if I hit trade, I can click on buy. And by clicking on buy, I am now able to buy shares in Snapchat. I can either use dollars, as you can see in the top right, it says dollars. So if I wanted to buy $100 worth of Snapchat, I could, I could click review, and it says now you are buying $100 of SNAP based on the current market price of $51.30. You will receive approximately 1.94 and it fluctuates a little bit. But if we actually go back, we can actually also buy what's called in shares. As you can see here at the top, you can buy in dollars or buy in shares. So if we clicked on buy in shares, then we can just select, okay, how many shares do we want of Snapchat? Maybe we just want one share. It's gonna be $51.29. Or we could buy five shares and then it'll just automatically multiply that for you. Now by default, this is a market order type. And let me explain to you guys what that is. Actually, if we click the top right again, you'll see that there's seven different order types here. There's buying dollars, buying shares, which are market orders. And then there's conditional orders, which I'm going to actually explain right now. The main thing you have to know about market orders is that when you buy in dollars or buy in shares, the market price is fluctuating throughout this whole time. So when you place your order, let's go back to the actual Snapchat screen of the actual stock and how it's doing at the chart. You can see that right now it's trading at $51.22, but if we just give it some time there, okay, it just changed to $51.26. So what happens is when you place a market order, the price is fluctuating. So you're not guaranteed that price. You're just saying that you want it now. And so by placing this order, you will get it now, but the price might not be the exact price that you want. So right now, let's buy one share of Snapchat. Right now, the market price is $51.21. The estimated cost is gonna be 51.23 now. It's changing all the time. But if we were to buy it right now, let's actually see what we get. So I'm gonna swipe up to submit this. Boom, I just bought an order. And actually it says, look, I the average price is $51.24 a share. Now you can see that that fluctuated a little bit from the previous order screen when I was purchasing it at $51.21 or I already forgot what it was, but basically it's not the exact price that you want. You can't specify the exact price when it comes to a market order. So with market orders, you can't specify the price, but with conditional orders, you can. So let's talk about those really quick. First, we have something called recurring investment. That's investing in SNAP on a recurring schedule. That's not really necessary in this case. We're not gonna be talking about it that much, but it's self-explanatory. If you wanted to invest in Snapchat on a recurring schedule for a long period of time, you could choose this option. What I wanna talk about is the limit order, and this allows you to buy Snapchat at a maximum price or lower. So let's click into that right now. 
Since the market price of Snapchat right now is $51.33, if we were to set a limit price of $51, what this allows me to do is specify that, hey, I wanna buy Snapchat only if the stock price is $51 or below. So if the price reaches $51.01, you're not buying, but if it reaches $51, it will go through. So if we go through the screens right here, you can set the trading hours when you want it to be executed, either during market hours or extended hours. Most people just choose market hours. So let's click continue here. And then you can set how long you want this limit order to be good for. So it can be good in just for the day till the market closes, or it can be good for 90 days, which means that whenever Snapchat goes below $51 in the next 90 days, for example, you would buy it at $51. So now that I'm at this screen, basically I can set the number of shares I want at that limit price. So let's say I wanted 10 shares of Snapchat at $51 and it expires in 90 days. That means anytime in the next 90 days, if the Snapchat price goes to $51, I'm going to be buying 10 shares of it. So basically a limit order says to the market, you want it, but at a specific price only. All right, now we're back to this screen. Let's look at trailing stop orders, stop orders and stop limit orders. To understand a trailing stop order, first we need to understand what a stop order is. So let's just click into stop order. And basically it says trigger market buy order if snap rises to. So right now the market price of Snapchat is now 51.37. So if we were to set the stop price to $55, what that means is that when the price hits $55, then we're going to execute what's called a market order. So basically just a normal order. Think of it as like an if then statement. If the price hits $55, then we're going to buy it. That's what a stop order means. Now you're probably wondering, Humphrey, why would I wanna set a price for a stock if it's above the current price that it's currently at? That's because if you think that the stock is going on an upward trend, you can set a stop order to basically capture that upward trend as it's occurring. So maybe you think Snapchat stock will one day reach $70, but right now it's just fluctuating between 50 and 52. But you have a hunch and that hunch is that basically if it reaches $55, it's gonna break through $55 all the way to 70. So you wanna set a stop price at $55. This will basically align your strategy and thereby eliminate you from having to monitor the stock 24 seven. So now let's look at trailing stop order and what that means. If we look into it here, it says trigger a market buy order if snap rises above its lowest price buy and then you can set a percentage. So let's say you wanna buy this stock only if it reaches 5% or above its current price. You can do that by setting a trail percentage of 5%, which I've shown you right here. And it shows you that the initial stop price will be 53.98. A trailing stop order automatically adjusts to the current stock price. So basically by saying 5% trail, that means that you want the initial order to take place if Snapchat ever goes up 5%. So if Snapchat goes up 4.9% or 4% or 4.5%, this order will never execute. Now this type of stop order is more useful on the selling side. You can set it to say 3% and if the stock ever drops more than 3%, it automatically will execute that order. So lastly guys, let's look at the stop limit order. This is actually a combination of the stop and the limit into one order. Now this gets a little bit confusing here, so bear with me a bit. If we click into this order, we can actually click the I in the top right and this gives you a good visual of it. Basically what it's saying is you can set a stop price, which is the initiating price of this trade. And then all of a sudden, once you do that, once that stock actually reaches that stop price, then the limit order is placed. So let's go through it here. Let's say we wanted to set a stop price of $53 for Snapchat. So if Snapchat ever reaches $53, then what, it, what happens is a limit order is then placed within the system and that allows you a lot of granular control over when you want your trades placed. Now, the main reason why people like this type of trade is that it gives you a lot of control over when the order should be filled, but it won't be guaranteed that it actually executes. In my opinion, if you're buying and holding for the long term, then doing a limit order or a market order are going to be the most common types for buying an actual stock. The other conditional orders are much more granular and mostly used by sophisticated traders and day traders alike. Okay, now we're in Weeble. I just opened it up and I wanna show you guys the differences between Weeble and Robinhood. As you can see, the interface is a little bit more cluttered than Robinhood is, but if we click on quick trade, and we search for a stock, let's say we wanna buy Coca-Cola, so KO. Coca-Cola right now, you can see that this screen is way more cluttered, but we have a lot of the same order types as we do in Robinhood. If you look in the middle of the screen, we have limit, we have market, we have stop orders as well. So let's go ahead and buy one share of Coca-Cola here because we can. And also the other thing to note about Weeble is that it doesn't offer fractional shares like Robinhood does. So with Weeble, you have to buy one share or nothing. So. Let's go ahead here and uh, click buy in the bottom left. 
And as you can see, this is our order confirmation. We're just gonna click confirm. Boom, right there, the open orders has been done. It looks like I have no more open orders. So my positions, if we go here, I now have one share of Coca-Cola and my average price was $53.03. If we go back to the chart of Coca-Cola, as you can see, the chart is a little bit more robust than what Robinhood offers. This is just more of a granular trading app. I would say one of the biggest reasons why people like Webull more than Robinhood right now is that Webull offers a really high incentive for signing up. They're actually offering four stocks just for signing up. So um, if you'd like four free stocks or two free stocks, I have links for that in the description below as well as a Robinhood link that you can use as well. All right guys, that's how you would buy a stock using Robinhood or Webull, but honestly, many of the trading apps are all very similar. I hope that you got some value out of this video. If you did, like the video please for the algorithm, subscribe to my channel for more videos from me in the future, and take the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I drop a video. Also, so make sure to use my referral link in the description below for Robinhood. All you have to do is deposit any amount. It could even be a dollar and you get a free stock from them. Lastly, thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys being here. So I will see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be in a couple days here. And uh, hopefully you guys found this exciting and useful. All right, bye.